Yes, your eyes are not deceiving you. I do have the world's shiniest head. Today, I'm going to share with you over 30 beginner woodworking projects. And it doesn't matter whether you're starting in your garden, your shed, your garage, or a custom workshop. It doesn't matter. You will be able to get started woodworking, building these projects made from pallet wood, reclaimed timber, scaffolding boards, you name it, you'll be able to get started building some of these projects. Hopefully they're going to inspire you, motivate you and give you the inspiration to get started in your woodworking journey today. And along the way, we're going to be joined by some of my woodworking buddies in the community who are going to share with you some of their top tips. And we're going to be joined by some special guests, celebrities from around the world, what I've met over the years. And the first one is going to be my friend, Will. And may I add, last night I spent a lovely evening with Will's wife having a few glasses of wine. So let's not hang around and get over to my friend Will and see what he has to say and then straight into the projects. Over to you, Will. Carl, you better keep my wife's name out of your flipping mouth. However, I'm so chuffed, you invited me to take part in your latest video. As you know, I'm a keen woodworker. My number one tip is we all make mistakes, but never give in or stop trying to better yourself and others. I'm outside table can also be made into a coffee table. You can see my dimensions here, 460 mil high, 400 by 400. And we're gonna use a simple method of joinery, which is pocket holes and butt joints. We're gonna have a table at the bottom here. And then we're gonna have this X-frame farmhouse style. And I'm gonna teach you how to do a half lap joint and these 45 degree angles. And I'm gonna show them how to put a tabletop together using biscuit joinery and the clamping methods needed.
Hey Carl, my advice for beginner woodworkers is don't get fooled or intimidated by those fancy workshops you see on YouTube. You don't need all those expensive tools. I've been at my woodworking hobby pretty much full on for the past 23 years, but I only bought my first table saw eight years ago when I started my YouTube channel. Before that, I was using a homemade table saw. I've always been of the opinion that a good craftsman is someone who knows how to get the best out of what they have. Learn to appreciate the tools you have, learn how to use them properly, and learn what their limitations are. When you do that and work within or up to those limitations, you will enjoy using them more, you'll get better results, and you'll be much safer. If you need to do something that your tools can't, then find another way. Usually that involves making some sort of jig. Those are great opportunities to use or improve your problem solving skills. So concentrate on developing your skills and your craft and finding your niche. And if you do that, the bigger and better tools will come in time as a natural progression of your woodworking journey. But above all else, have fun. Hi Carl, hi everyone, Phil here from Phil Wyatt Projects. So I've just got a quick bit of advice for you all today if you're starting out in woodworking or if you just want to save some money sourcing your wood. So here we are inside my workshop and as you can see I've got all this long wood stored up here and I've also got plenty of shorter pieces here. 99% of this wood um, I've found in skips, alleyways and just thrown out on the side of the road makes for really useful wood for simple projects and you don't have to worry about the cost of the wood as you know wood is very expensive these days so whenever you can keep hold of and collect wood that you find all of this long wood i've found for free more wood here that i've found mostly hardwoods there's more wood over here old chests of drawers scraps thrown out things like that there's all sorts here oak pine and here outside is a little log store that i built out of pallet wood and as you can see it's holding loads of scraps of all sorts of wood. I found all this wood and it just saves you a lot of money. When you're starting out in woodworking you might mess up a few projects so you don't really want to spend too much just in case you waste some. 
Okay, so that is it for my quick tip there. So Carl, over to you. Today's video, we're gonna be making some storage crates for boots and shoes, what you can keep in the hallway and keep all that messy mud from going all over your nice carpet. For the project, we're gonna be using pallet wood and we're gonna turn this horrible pallet wood into to this. Some nice steady shoe crates to keep all your dirty wellies and boots in. And you can personalize them as well, which looks pretty cool. We're gonna show you in detail how we do this routing today. We got your back, you got nothing to fear. Pick up the slack, we can take it from here. Go on and handle what you need to when you need to. We got you. Already pounding hard, burnt nerves, and never gonna make up. Wonder how it got this far. Too late to retrace the steps, won't do any good, I guess. Never gonna make it out, never gonna make it now. We got your back, you got nothing to fear. Pick up the slack, we can take it from here. Go on and handle what you need. Nothing to fear. Pick up the slack, we can take it from here. Go on and handle what you need to when you need to. We got you. You feel it rise with every word that they say. Let it pass by anything in the way. No need to worry or be sorry, cause I see you in the light. Just in case Don't be nervous Cause I'm here now Fight the urge To stay the same I got my hand out Won't you reach For me Try What's up woodworkers, Ben from Lion and Bear Woodworking here. When you start out, the easiest way to join bits of wood together is with screws. But if you want an easy way to level up your projects and hide those screws, then all you need to do is drill a shallow hole with a 10 millimeter drill bit first. Just make sure that it's wide enough for your screw head to fit through. Then you can screw your piece together and glue a 10 millimeter dowel in to cover it up put it flush and sand it smooth. You can buy pre-made dowels or you can make your own with an inexpensive plug cutting bit for your drill. Make the wood match for a clean seamless effect or use a contrasting wood to turn it into a feature. In today's video I've designed two simple planters and built them step by step tutorial style for you to follow along and build for yourself. 
Some of the tools that I use today are a miter saw, a brad nailer and a drill driver. But if you don't have them tools, you could get, definitely get away with using a circular saw, a hand saw, hammer and nails. But you probably do want a, a combination drill, but you don't need a driver. Don't believe the lies They are trying to keep you quiet And don't lose your mind Try to find your worth inside it And I went finished then guys and I think you'll agree they look pretty nice outside the house here and if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like and subscribe if you're a regular viewer of the channel don't forget you can support the channel through PayPal Patreon and channel membership and I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank everybody who does and I'll see you on next week's video guys bye g'day to all the friends and followers of Carl Pope Woodcraft my name's Jamie from wouldn't it be grand and I'm a fellow maker my advice to anyone looking at getting into woodcrafting or woodworking is twofold firstly Look online or look in your local area for places where you can get secondhand tools to start with. Three years ago, this was just an empty shed, and I've been able to fill it with secondhand tools from Facebook Marketplace, Gumtree, eBay, and even local flea markets. Don't feel like you have to go out and spend full price initially for brand new tools. Secondhand tools will usually be more than adequate for what you need to get started. The second bit of advice I have is to go looking for a scroll saw. These are usually very, very cheap, very, very versatile, and also a lot safer to use when you first get started. They're quiet, relatively easy to keep clean and potentially useful for somebody that's using this in a spare room or a small garage workshop, maybe in an apartment block for example. And if you combine that with some dimension lumber, a handsaw and a miter box from your local hardware store, you're off to a great start on your woodworking journey. Here's some of the things I've made already with this machine. That's my advice and I hope to see you creating something amazing soon. Good luck. I don't care, my 
much about anything The only thing that matters to me is you But it ain't fair that I'm the one carrying The very thing that we have signed on to about anything the only thing that matters to me is you but it ain't fair that i'm the one carrying the very thing that we have signed on to Now, you're gonna get heaps of really good advice in this video from all the other makers. However, the best advice is just get started. Just get started, that's it. If you're a beginner, just get started. Do whatever you have to do just to get in the game. Cheap and nasty tools, beg, borrow, don't steal. Get yourself some tools, get yourself a little bit of space, and just have a go, that's it. Same goes if you want to get into making videos and document your journey, just get started. Grab your phone, get a $10 tripod, stick your face on there and get into it, okay? The rest of the stuff, that all comes as you go. Don't get overwhelmed with 
the $100,000 workshops or even shops like mine. Looks like I have got a lot of stuff. I do now. It takes time. It takes effort. You won't get there if you don't just get started. And just have some fun. Okay? It's a hobby. Let it grow into whatever you want. Have some fun. Just get started. Okay? Catch you later. Hey Carl, I know you love your hand tools, so here's a little tip around squares. Don't assume that they're accurate, you have to check them first. Find a board with a straight edge and make a couple lines. Flip the square over and do it again. Hopefully you'll see two lines running parallel to each other with little or no difference in the gap. But you might see the lines merge into or separate from each other. This is a bad thing and you'll either want to return it or perhaps get your sandpaper out and carefully bring the square back into alignment. Good little tip that I wish I knew about a bit earlier in my woodwork journey. 
Cheers, Carl. Wood Father out. G'day Carl, James from Fix It Fingers here and my biggest tip for anyone starting out in woodworking is light. Glorious, glorious light. Workshops tend to be dark and dingy places. I operated off a single light globe overhead for far too long, but obviously there are a few other things you can do if you're lucky enough to live in Australia with nice weather, such as this. Now isn't that much better? However, sometimes the natural light still isn't enough. Even with some decent overhead light, and even if you're not filming anything, 
having these little portable spotlights on a tripod to really focus some illumination on whatever you're working on can be a game changer. A simple desk lamp even can be helpful when you're doing fine detail work. <coughs> but honestly, these sorts of LED box lights are getting really, really affordable. I'm sure Carl can put some affiliate links down below for you. Hop onto one of your favorite shopping sites and you should be able to find these lovely big box lights relatively cheaply. Stick them up on your roof as best you can. I've got a one car garage, I've got four of them and they're doing pretty well as far as my illumination needs go. It may not be a traditional tip, but trust me, having adequate lighting in your workshop is one of the best things you can do for your woodworking. This is James Fix Your Fingers. Thanks guys. When you try your best but you don't succeed When you get what you want but not what you need When you feel so tired but you can't sleep Stuck in Come streaming down your face When you lose something you can't replace When you love someone but it goes to waste Could it be Quick tip if you're new to woodworking and don't know, a normal carpenter's pencil, the flat type, it's got a special secret about its size. Let me quickly show you and what you'd use it for. It's no coincidence that most uh, carpenter's pencils look the same. They look the same because they're the same dimensions. Now a good quality one will be half an inch wide by a quarter of an inch thick. Quarter of an inch, half an inch. So what's the point of that? Well, if you've got some slats, for example, like this, and you want to space them out evenly. That's a quarter of an inch. That's a quarter of an inch. Look, evenly spaced. How long did it take? Right, and also for marking out. Marking out, you know that this is half inch wide, so that means that this point in the middle here is going to be at a quarter of an inch. So if you put it on the edge, mark along, that it's quarter of an inch from that point there to the base. Also, if you turn it on its side and go flat, that becomes half of that, which is an eighth of an inch. So you've now got two lines, one at a quarter of an inch, one at an eighth of an inch. Ideal if you're marking out edges. Right, so that's a very quick tip about the Humble Carpenter's Pencil. Uh, just one other bonus tip. For the price of one of these modern ones, you can get how many? Thanks for watching. Bye. To let it go. But if you never try, you'll never know. Just what you
But before we use any power tools, let's talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tool. <laughs> Never put your hands where you wouldn't put your car. Welcome everybody. Hi Carl. My pro tip of the day for you guys is spend money on your tools wisely. So what do I mean by that? Well, sometimes you plan ahead over the year and you think what tools you're going to need for the jobs you've got. For example, this year you're going to make two tables. So you need something to join the boards to create the panels. Well, you can splash out on a Festool Domino. However, a cheaper alternative 
would be just a biscuit jointer just to hold those boards in a nice panel in a steady way sometimes the budget tools you're thinking of buying are actually not perfect for example my table saw however if you want to spend some time with the machine and actually tune it up maybe make a couple of jigs for it it will eventually deliver you very good results and at the same time will save you a lot of money in your pocket and that extra money that you managed to save from buying a budget tool, you can actually spend somewhere else. For example, on a tool that you know you'll be using daily for multiple hours. For example, a sander. You're usually going to spend so much time sanding your projects to get to that perfect finish you after. So it's a good idea to invest in a very good sander, the best you can get. But that's all the tips I've got for you today. Over to you, Carl. So much a man can tell me, so much he can say, you remain my power, my pleasure, my pain. To me, you're like a grown addiction that I can deny. Now, won't you tell me, is that happy, baby? But did you know that when it snows, my eyes become a large and alive? Hey, Carl, this is Jesper Mix. Here is a tip for dismantling pallets. Use a card jack. We all got them. And the fastest way to get the nails out is shooting them out with this reverse nail gun. Now, on to the next pallet wood project. Hi, I'm Tam from the Birmingham Wood Company, and here's my top tip. Just build something. Stop overthinking, stop procrastinating, stop thinking you need all the latest gear, and just build something. Here's my first ever build. Simple, it's a bit ugly, and as you can see, it's got nails on show, splits in the wood. Um, but it, it's, a, it's a box that I built myself with a, just a hammer, saw, and some panel pins. Uh, once I stopped overthinking it, went ahead and did it. It gave me a much better understanding of how to make a box. And that, in turn, gave me the confidence to try more complex builds. Here's some of the other boxes I built. None of them are perfect, none of them are works of art. But they're a damn sight better than the first one, let's be honest. Uh, I've had a, even had a go at mitered supply and sliding lids. Uh, I, wouldn't have, I would never have attempted any of these unless I'd just thrown myself into it and built the first one. So my advice to anyone starting out, stop overthinking things, stop overcomplicating things, 
and just build something. Once you've started, you won't stop. Good luck. Maybe I'm foolish, or maybe I'm blind Thinking I can see through this and see what's behind Got no way to prove it, so maybe I'm lying But I'm only human after all I'm only human after all Don't put your blame on me Don't put your blame on me Take a look in the mirror, and what do you see? You see it clearer, or are you deceived in what you believe? Cause I'm only human after all, and you're only human after all. Don't put the blame on me, don't put your blame on me. my opinion don't ask me to lie and beg for forgiveness for making you cry for making you cry Cause i'm only human after all i'm only human after all don't put your blame on me don't put the blame on me Hi, it's Pete from Cellar Woodworks in Malmö, Sweden. My tip is to buy an IR plug socket, a load of remotes, scatter them around your workshop next to your machines you use most often, and then when you need to turn it on, it's there at your disposal. My second tip is if you're forgetful and you're always paranoid when you leave the workshop that you've left something on, like the sharpening station, the air filtration or this, then hook up a timer circuit so that even if you actually have forgotten it, in an hour or two, it will turn itself off. I'm only human after all. I'm only human after all. Don't put the blame on me. Don't put the blame on me. I'm only human, I do what I can. I'm just a man, I do what I can. Don't put the blame on me. Don't put your blame on me.
G'day folks, Uncle Nackers here. Now look, I get it. Trying to cut a straight line with a circular saw can be a little tricky. So in a bid to get those cut edges nice and straight, try these couple of cool tricks. For narrow timber, like a wall stud for example, place a speed square hard up against the wood and then just simply run the edge of the saw up against the square and Bob's your uncle. And for those longer cuts, like cutting down a strip of plywood, use a straight edge or a jig, which you then lock in place with a clamp, and then just run the saw hard up against the straight edge, and away you go. Too easy? Lemon squeezy. your back you got nothing to fear pick up the slack we can take it from here go on and handle what you need to when you need to we got you reach out the minute you wake up chest already pounding hard Never gonna make up Wonder how it got this far Too late to retrace the steps Won't do any good, I guess Never gonna make it out Never gonna make it now We got your back, you got nothing to fear Pick up the slack, we can take it from here Go on and handle what you need to When you need to, we got you with every word that they say Let it pass by anything in the way No need to worry or be sorry Cause I see you in the light Sincere, it's stripped of thy pleasures Taking down a physical form Templates I'm never gonna measure Wondering what the lines are for Trace steps too soon to just forget. Every time you're coming down, every time you're coming down, we got your back. You got nothing to fear. Pick up the slack, we can take it from here. No need to worry or be sorry. Carl, as soon as I get out of this Romania hellhole, I'll pop down to your workshop and you can teach me some woodworking skills. As I remember, the best tip you gave me was just grow a beard as this improves your woodworking by 50%. Let's go out for that pint soon. I have some ladies dying to meet you. Just in case Don't be nervous Cause I'm here now Fight the urge To stay the same I got my hand out Won't you reach For me Try Darling, what that 
My name's James from the One Handed Maker channel and I'm going to give you a tip about making runners for table saw sleds. I've made them out of all sorts of timbers, I've made them out of plastic, but when you look on the internet you get these fancy ones that are adjustable with a grub screw and they're metal or plastic. And I thought to myself, why can't I just make a timber runner with adjustable screws in it? So I did. Here it is. You can see, runner, it's got four screws in the side of the runner, which makes it adjustable. So I cut the timber about two millimeters 
shy or narrow than the slot in the table saw. Then I drilled four holes and screwed in four screws and adjusted them so they just fit. There's no play and if there was, I can just make it bigger or smaller. So the way I did it was hold that down, drill a small hole, get your tiny little wood screws. It wouldn't matter if they were self tapping screws. I think round head screws might be better. Time will tell. Then awkwardly, screw them in until they fit in the groove. Look at that. That is absolutely perfect. And you can make it as long as you want. You can add as many screws as you want. And I have now overcome the problem of making these fit and making them adjustable on the cheap. That's my tip for today. Enjoy it. Trying to prove it won't fall out And all the men are goggles Dip long in Irish stout Massive thank you to everybody who watches our videos, we really do appreciate it. And don't forget, if you're not subscribed, it's absolutely free, it doesn't cost you a penny to subscribe. So just hit that subscribe button, and there's a little bell as well which you can ring. And if you ring that bell, you'll be notified every single time that we upload a video. Thanks a lot guys for watching, and keep supporting the channel, we really do appreciate it. Place is big 
Pickle. The people are pickles for sure. And no one knows that they've done more here than they ever would do in the jar. This could be Rotterdam or anywhere. Liverpool or Rome. Cause Rotterdam is anywhere. Anywhere alone, this could be Rotterdam or anywhere, Liverpool or Rome, cause Rotterdam is anywhere, anywhere alone, anywhere alone. My advice for every woodworker is to watch all Carl's videos. This will bring on their woodworking skills leaps and bounds. Thank you for reaching out to me, Carl, to be involved in this video. You're a true friend and master craftsman. Covered, the fist fights on the beach. The busies round us up. Do it all again next week. An embryonic love. The first time that it's sky. Embarrass yourself for someone Crying like a child And the boy you kicked Tom's head in Still bugs me now That's the thing, it lingers And curse you when you die Hi, Carl. Thank you for being a supporter of my work over the years. It's about time I repaid the favor. My tip is to keep your wood hard as no one like softwood and use oils to lubricate and bring out the natural beauty. See you soon, boys. Spent my teens in rage, spiraling in silence, and I arm myself with a grin. There's always, always the fucking joker buried in the humor. From looks of white noise and boys, boys, not the room talking lads, lads, drenched in cheap drinking snipe bags, a mirror picture of my old man. Oh God, the kids are dying.
Yo 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 Marshall Mathers into workshop with my number one woodworking tip. Sign up for Carl's Patreon and channel membership to be a number one fan. See you soon, douchebags.
remember me, I'm the chap that everyone expected to change the world, but I'm a politician. Ha uh ha. -huh. Anyway, enough about me. Let's talk woodworking. Tips. If you're in the USA, you best go carefully and not injure yourself as you don't have the NHS like those in the UK and you might loose your fingers. Yay, thank you, Carl, for making a Christmas project. You're definitely going to be on Santa's good list now. My tip is always have lots of sweet snacks in your workshop so you don't get all dizzy and chop off your hand. My favorite sweets are candy canes, so enjoy.
somebody's playing that king chord. Mama is hanging mistletoe. Carl, unfortunately, I won't be taking part in your debacle of a video. I was looking forward to it until I heard you're still best friends with Trump. If I were to give a tip, I'd suggest using good quality sandpaper, preferably bought through your affiliate links. But as I'm not taking part, I won't. Write it down, same situation, work it out, sleep in the basement, one step, one step backward, one step Hi, Carl. Thanks for coming on my podcast. I've been watching your woodworking for years now. I've learned a lot from you. And one of my favorite tips you gave me was to make sure your preparation is on point for your glue ups to remove any stress, have everything laid out, ready to go. If you would like to support the channel financially, there's a few different ways you can do that. We've just figured out there's a buy me a coffee app which and that's just like giving somebody a tip so if you want to do a one-off donation you can do that 
Also, if you'd like to do things a little bit more permanent, there's the channel membership, which you can do through YouTube and Patreon, which has been around a long while now. And it goes a long way to making the channel and our business a lot better. Thanks a lot, guys. Hi, Carl Jordan here. I hope you don't get canceled even more than you have by the woodworking community for having me on in your video. My number one tip is measure twice, cut once. Sorry I couldn't think of anything original like the woke students I teach.
like your cabinet. Ooh. Ooh. Go on, let's go. <laughs> hey, yo, people. It's your boy Snoop D O double G, and I just wanted to remind you never trust a fart after Taco Bell, my nephew. Oh, and always take Carl Pope Woodcraft's advice. He's the man in the hood for sure when it comes to all things wood. I wouldn't trust anyone else handling my hardwood, get me.
Hey Carl, if you're feeling down, just remember, somewhere in the world, a guy named Jeff Bezos is balding. That should make you feel better. Oh, and my tip is to purchase the most ridiculous expensive tools you can afford or you'll never make as a woodworker. Then build a space shuttle with them tools.
If you've watched the video till this point, an epic two hours of beginner woodworking projects, then you are an absolute legend and we appreciate every single one of those minutes that you watched. And I'm assuming that you did enjoy the video, otherwise you wouldn't watch till this point. And if you did, you'll probably enjoy this video as well, which is going to enable you to save money and buy more tools for your woodworking hobby.